Have you ever wondered what goes into creating a shot list and how to go about getting it all into the can? Well, I'll tell you how I do it in this video right here. If you're new here, why don't you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be alerted every time a new video is posted to this channel. Oh, and welcome. If only we were able to see into the future, all of our filmmaking problems would be solved, right? Well, one way we can somewhat look into the future is by creating a shot list. So if a shot list is kind of like seeing into the future of what your movie will be, let's get into the tech of how that actually is able to come about. So basically what a shot list is, it gives you an idea of every shot that you foresee being in your movie. Is it a close up? Is it a wide shot? It's a list of the movie edited inside your head. How do you create a shot list? It's actually pretty simple. All you do is go through your movie scene by scene. As you read through it, make a list of every single shot that you think should be in that scene. And eventually you'll have every shot you see in your entire movie. As you write down these shots, say whether it's a close up or a wide shot or a dolly or trucking or a crane shot or aerial shot. In the case of shots such as an over the shoulder shot, a term that is used often is shot is dirty. Basically, it means that there's something in the foreground of your frame. Clean would be nothing in the foreground. So an example would be over the shoulder would be a dirty shot or a close up on somebody or a mid shot of somebody. Clean would be they're the only thing in the frame. So one thing that you need to know is abbreviations or the terminology when it comes to creating a shot list. CU stands for close-up, ECU stands for extreme close-up, MS is a medium shot, WS would be a wide shot, OTS is over the shoulder, dirty means that there's something in the foreground of your image, clean means that the subject that you're filming is isolated in the frame. There's nothing else in the frame, or at least in the foreground of your frame, that obstructs the view of the subject. Then you might have shots like move on or move towards. Dolly is a shot that moves in and out. Trucking moves left and right. Panning is the shot moving on the tripod axis, left or right. Tilting is the camera moving up and down. Aerial is, well, as you guess it, an aerial shot. The main thing is to be able to convey what the shot is that you want in as short a phrase as possible. Close up on George. Over the shoulder on Sally. Extreme close up or establishing shot. Wide shot of house. These are all things that you want to know when you're reading through your shot list so you can move quickly and know exactly what the shot is that you want to get. Here's a little trick that I use when creating my shot list or at least organizing my shot list that helps greatly in the scheduling process so that when I'm shooting the movie, I can be as efficient as possible. I will try to group all of the shots for each character so that all of the shots on character A are grouped together. Wide shot, medium shot, close up, inserts of hands. All the shots for character A is grouped. And then if I have a character B, all of their shots are grouped as well. And then you've got your wide shots that will be in there. I typically start my wides. Now the reason for that is the characters or the actors oftentimes need to warm up into the scene. They're testing their blocking, testing the rhythm of the scene and being able to let them practice that in the wide so that they can nail it down, you move in for a close-ups and your performances are gonna be so much better. When you are in production and shooting out your scenes, starting with the wide is great for performances, but once you move into your coverage, I always recommend to try and shoot out an entire side of the, of the scene before turning things around. The reason being is if you turn your camera around, your lighting's all off. Sometimes it takes 15 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour depending on how complicated your lighting setup is. Now, if you have to do that for every single setup, you're wasting so much time. But if it's just minor adjustments, you might be able to get like four or five setups fairly quickly before you have to turn around and spend all that time relighting the scene. It's a very, very simple thing that just takes a small amount of prep so that you can get it done right. And besides, 
Your first AD and producers will love you for being efficient and not wasting everybody's time. You've looked into the future, you've planned your tech around how to get to the future, and now let's take a look at the results of your hard work right after we pay some bills. This video is brought to you by the I'm an Indie Filmmaker shirt because you always are searching for money, right? And sometimes people don't always have money to give you or you have such a small budget, people just assume that you can't get anything done. Well, us as indie filmmakers who have really honed our craft and know how to maximize our efficiency can look at them and say, you know what? No budget, no problem. I'm an indie filmmaker. So let people know who you are, an indie filmmaker, and a lack of money is not gonna stop you from completing your movie. Check out the merch store for t-shirts, sweatshirts, and all sorts of different things. And let your friends know that no budget is no problem because you're an indie filmmaker. Let's see the results of your hard work and planning. One thing that I like to do when I am shooting a movie is as I go each shot, I try and cross it off. Like I've got my shot list in, in my production binder, my director's production binder. And as the shots go, I will cross it off. I'll see how much I'm achieving in a day. It's a real big motivator to know that, hey, I might have spent the past hour and a half on this scene, but look at everything that I've done so far. It's the small milestones that will contribute to the achievement of the greater goal which is completing your movie. Another thing you can do that's a huge encouragement and morale booster to your crew is to post your shots for the day. Whether it's on a call sheet, on a bulletin board near base camp, having a visual of what you're planning to achieve in a day will not only boost morale, but it will also get people trying harder to complete everything that needs to get done. Then as you're going, you complete a shot, cross it off. When you complete a scene, mark that as well. Show people the accomplishments they're making. Congratulate them on the hard work well done. And you'll see that your crew becomes more of a family and starts working as a team together because filmmaking is a team effort. And if you can use the abilities of your entire crew to make your project a success, then do it. So hopefully that information was helpful for you in your indie filmmaking career. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.